Hello everyone, I'm here once again with another topic on the um, educational perspectives and issues, contemporary educational perspectives and issues as related to the development of our student uh, academically. Today we are going a step forward, we are going a step forward, we are going higher than what we have been doing before. Um, my name once again is David Oni and um, you can subscribe to our youtube channel david Oni. click on the notification button leave your comment and also like our comments we are appealing to you to always come to our youtube channel and uh, you know subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more and more interesting topics as related to the development of our students in our society in our country called the nigeria and the outside the world now we're going to move a step forward we are going to look at what we call the center periphery. Center periphery theory. Center periphery theory. Center periphery theory. And this topic, um, we are going to look under what we call political science. Political science political science. So we're moving a step further on what we call center periphery theory. Now the center periphery theory can also be called core periphery. Core periphery. Core periphery. So when you hear the word core periphery or center periphery we are talking about the same thing. Now, the center periphery is talking about the structural relationship, structural relationship, structural relationship that existed between the advanced countries or metropolitan countries or first world countries so we can say is a structural relationship between metropolitan countries metropolitan countries you can call them advanced countries or you can also call them first world countries first world countries so it is a structural relationship that existed or exists between the advanced countries or metropolitan countries or the first world countries and the developing countries and developing countries and developing countries and developing countries, and developing countries. now what we're saying here is that the center periphery theory or the core periphery is referring to the structural relationship that existed between the advanced, the metropolitan or the first world countries and the developing uh, countries. So we're going to look at the relationship that existed between them or that exists between the, these two um, peripheries, between the core and the, what, and the periphery. So the core or the center is the advanced, the metropolitan, or the first world country, while the periphery is the developing uh, countries. Now, the concept of center periphery was developed in the 60s and the 70s, in the 60s and 1970s, in the 60s and the 70s, to look at the concept of development and the uh, under development to look at the concept of development and the uh, under development but before i move forward or before i continue what is advanced country or what do we mean by a country being advanced 
or what do you mean by a metropolitan country or what do you mean by a first world country metropolitan countries are countries that are at the at the core they are the advanced countries they are the countries that have a strong economic system they have a strong political system they have a strong educational system they have they are well advanced technologically they are well in the area of health they are well advanced in the area of education economy politics and the rest of them just name them they are well advanced they are well sophisticated they are well advanced they are they are modernized economic system and that's why we call them the metropolitan countries they are well advanced in everything they are they have gone ahead or beyond other countries then when you talk about the developing countries you are talking about countries that are still struggling you are talking about countries that are still backward you are talking about countries that are still underdeveloped because in, in you know in political science or in the area of the study of this uh, topic most of these advanced countries don't refer to you know the developing countries that was as underdeveloped because underdevelopment is a concept or idea or principle that will bring these countries backward that will try to, to discourage them so they prefer to use the word developing instead of what of underdevelopment if you use the word underdevelopment it means that, that these countries have not started anything they have not even you know they have not even surpassed the level of what of a uh, of them being categorized or has been developing so and that is why they use the word developing countries but if you look at the reality or the perspective of on ground politically in the area of political science you agree with me that well, that the word under development cannot be used but we can use the word they uh, developing so developing is a continuous way that they are still developing they are still you know catching up with the west so the west are the advanced countries the metropolitan countries the first world countries where everything that they have there is top class top notch why the developing are those that are still trying to, to catch up with the advanced uh, countries so the the center periphery is talking about the structural relationship that existed between the advanced metropolitan and first world countries and the developing uh, countries now let's move ahead now now we have also said that this concept started in what in the 60s and in the 70s now let's just move ahead now the concept of center periphery is deeply rooted using the masses uh, perspective on what we call a uh, imperialism 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 now when you're talking about imperialism you are talking about domination domination now after the after the development of um the development of the most african countries or the asian countries during this period we're talking about after they have gained their independence what we now have what we, what we now have now is what we call a uh, imperialism now most of these countries even though they have gained their independence they are still being uh, imperialized they are being imperialized means that what they are still being dominated you understand and that is why we have what we call a uh, media imperialism we have a um, social imperialism we have economic uh, imperialism we have a political imperialism so we have media imperialism media domination we have social imperialism mid social domination we have economic uh, imperialism meaning what economic domination then we have what we call political imperialism meaning what political domination so the relationship between the west the advanced the metropolitan or the first world countries and the developing countries is not a relationship that is a uh, equal the relationship is not equal the relationship is meant to favor one 
at the expense of the other. So the relationship between the center and the periphery is not an equal relationship. So the center, which is this, the advanced in the metropolitan and the first world countries, and the periphery is not an equal relationship. The relationship is not uh, equal. The relationship is what we call the client patron relationship. Client client patron's uh, relationship. Who is the client and who is the patron? The client is the center, while the periphery is the patron. And that is why we say that the relationship between them is not an equal relationship. Now, we're not talking about only developing countries in Africa. We're also talking about the relationship that, be that exists between the developed countries and what and those countries in the Asian countries. So, the relationship between them is not an equal relationship. And why do we say that? The composition of what? Of capital and their wages in the center is I. The in the center, the composition of the wages and capital in the center is very, very high. There is a high composition of capital and wages in the center. What are we saying here? What we're saying is that, well, that in advanced countries, people earn more capital, people earn more what we call more wages. But when you come to the periphery, there is a low composition of capital, low composition of capital, and uh, what we call uh, wages. Now, what do we mean by that? We're saying that in the developing countries, in relation to, uh, to capital and wages, there is a low capital and the wages. What we're saying is that people that are working in the advanced countries, they earn more, far more than those that are earning in the periphery. Those that are in the periphery here, they earn, they earn what we call low capital and wages. And that's why, if you, if you look at it very well, when you compare the currency relations between the advanced and the you know and the developing uh, countries together, you realize that, that people in the advanced countries they earn better wages. In developing countries, you see that people earn maybe what we call one dollar per day, one dollar per day. In Nigeria relations, we are saying that, well, that people can earn three hundred and sixty-five naira per day. Then when you calculate three hundred and sixty-five naira per day times thirty you will discover that, that the wages is very, very, very low. It is what we call starvation wages. Starvation wages. Starvation wages. Now, what do we mean by starvation wages? A starvation wage is a wage that cannot sustain an individual, not to talk about, not to talk of his extended uh, relations or what, or families. The money cannot sustain him. The money is not enough for him. The money cannot carry him to the end of the month. He's struggling every day to survive. He cannot be able to, to fulfill all his obligations because why? He's being paid starvation wages. But if it comes to the center, the center, which is the advanced countries, you discover that people earn more wages and what, and they earn more capital. So the relationship is not an equal one. Now, because of the center periphery perspective, it has structured the countries into what we call the advanced or capitalist countries or capitalist countries then we have what we call the socialist countries then we have what we call uh, developing countries or post-colonial countries or post-colonial countries post-colonial countries Now, who are the advanced capitalist countries? The advanced capitalist countries are what we said earlier. They are the countries that economically they are very buoyant. Politically, they have a well-structured system. They have a system that is well organized. They have a system that is well structured. They have a system that is well coordinated. Then when you talk about the socialist countries, you are talking about countries where the government you know controls everything. 
where the government regulates everything, where the government is the one in charge. And these countries are the countries like they are in Russia, they are countries like China and the rest of them. Then when you talk about the developing of post-colonial countries, we are referring to the countries